Everybody, uh, welcome. Uh, usually we do this um, weekly, bi-weekly uh, interview series in our private Facebook group, One Change Away, but uh, times are changing and more people need to hear this message uh, as soon as possible. So today our guest is Andrew Skopik. He is a high performance coach, a phenomenal guy. I've heard him speak several times. Um, so we're going to talk about how to thrive, not just survive in uh, the ever-changing world that we're in uh, and the, uh, the fact that we really uh, are, are, are in uncharted waters. So Andrew, uh, welcome. Uh, pleasure to have you. I haven't talked to you in a little bit, but this is out of pure coincidence. We scheduled this last year. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, good timing for it. But can, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your story and, and what you did? Well, so, so I am a transformational strategist and a high performance coach. So um, I've learned the hard way. You know, I've, I've learned how to transform from, you know, nearly losing my life, you know, having flatline health, flatline finances, flatline relationships to becoming more, you know, going from barely surviving to thriving. So I think it's a, a fitting title today, David, of, you know, how, how do we go from just getting by, you know, surviving? I mean, if we look at what we're presently engaged with, with this pandemic and still a lot of unknowns, a lot of people are just surviving. And what do we need to do in the coming days, hours, weeks, to be in a position where maybe we can actually start to thrive. So I've, I've spent my life dedicated to helping, you know, what's that shift needed? What's, what's going to take us to the next level? And so I am here to add as much as I can to this conversation because these are our very uncertain times. They're also for many, I was speaking to one of my, one, one of my colleagues yesterday, they're very empowering times. And this is where legends are often born. If you're looking at the Great Rep Re Recession or the Depression, at times of major challenge, there's always those that step up. They're always stepping up. So what does that look like? That's what drives me to be a strategist. You know, there's actually a, a, a better way to look at this set of who am I? Like, what does this look like? There are three types of CEOs that actually were just studied, right? Three different groups. 29 were researched. The first one's more fear focused, watching a lot of news, stuck in guilt and shame, spending way too much time just trying to survive. Other CEOs are a little more unfocused, thinking this is a vacation where I can catch up on my shows. I can sit back and let the government do their thing. And then there's a third group, and that's hopefully where we're going to spend most of our time today, but we're also going to honor the other side. Uh, I wasn't always here, but this, the third group is the strategy focused CEO, someone who's doing what they need to do, making adjustments. You know, it's not the facts, David, that I think are most challenging. It's how we adapt to the facts in, you know, and behind you, it says adjusting the cause, right? Adjusting to our times, modern times. So happy to be here. Absolutely. And you hit it right on the head. I mean, we can be proactive or inactive in this situation and Love we need it. to be proactive. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, as Andrew said, he is a hands-on guy. He is um, working to get you to change your trajectory. So, again, thank you. You know, if you're on here listening to this, if you have a question, uh, I have a, a separate video up where I can see the comments. Put it in the comments. We'll try to get to the questions. Um, and, you know, give us a shout out if you like something. Thumbs up, all that, because it all plays into Facebook allowing more people to actually see this information. Um, so, Andrew, what's the first skill, the number one skill that everybody needs to get a hold of to stay focused, to stay positive? during these times? Well, before we go to being positive, because I'm definitely not going to be here expecting that um, just by here, let's, let's be positive. Let's jump up and down and do some jumping jacks. Like we need more strategies than that. And you know, you hit it on, on the head. 
The first thing is around focus. In fact, it's around clarity. It's one of the six habits that science, performance sciences has actually now proven, David, to help people get to the next level. What is, what are the habits that are behind the world's highest achieving? And one of those is clarity, seeking continual clarity. And the first step in having or staying more focused is who am I right now? Being more intentional in who you are, write that down. Because right now people are watching you. Could be your kids, your spouse, your parents, your siblings, and maybe you're more prepared for this. Maybe you've done more work and development. Maybe you've adjusted yourself, right? Adjusting to the cause over many years. And now it's like, okay, I feel like it's really time to show up, right? If we can be more intentional, we'll create more focus. So the, the key here is ask yourself, who do I need to be now? Who do I need to be for others? You know, and, and there's going to be a lot coming at you. So while we're, we're in maintaining or attempting to engage focus, we also have to eliminate distractions. So this is going to be a really tough place to be because the news feed, the social media feed, it's no longer just a quick hit of dopamine or fast suppressant. They're like, oh, oh, I like that. Oh, new novelty <laughs> stuff scrolling through. Now it's like deaths. And it's, it's literally creating what I call the F disease response. And if you want more focus, we have to actually address the root issue. We have to adjust to the root issue. And that is frustration, fatigue, and fear. Frustration, fatigue, and fear. So if I'm frustrated because I'm constantly looking at news, that will fatigue me. Oh, and how are you responding now to your kids, to your spouse, to your, your significant others on the phone? I got off a, a call with one of my clients uh, two days ago, and she was literally sobbing when I called her. And I was happy to adjust my coaching session with her, and I was ready for it. But I also knew that it happened to fall on a topic that I met, you know, there's a bit of a medley there that I help merge into. So focus is number one, who am I? Where can I bring more intention right now? Think about it. If you're a radio station and you're distorted on some static right now, just turn the tuner a little. Oh, and if you want to be intentional on 101.1 reality is here and I need to do my best FM, or you can be 103.5 this sucks and complain about it, you're going to have two different outcomes here. You're going to create two separate focuses and the focus where your focus goes, your reality will sure go as well because your focus, your thinking creates how you feel. So ask yourself, how do I feel after looking at the news? Not that good. Your heart's probably going, you're getting the butterflies in the stomach, your body's saying, please yes. no. It's, this imagine virtual response is now real and it's it's taking your body on a roller coaster down so if you can change what you're focused on by being more intentional on what you actually want you'll change how you feel when you change how you feel guess what you'll turn the tv off you'll go for a walk you'll do some stretching you'll take better care of yourself right and that's why it's important to have someone like david in your corner because he'll help you take better care of yourself whether virtually or you know, probably limited in some way. I want you to really plug in and what David has because he's putting himself out there for his community and for you. So, you know, that reality is key from focus. Like you said, the, the focus and it's the time to step up, um, you know, never been. I better. noticed it the other day I was in the car. I turned on CNN. It was all Corona. I turned on Fox. It was all Corona. I flipped over to the BBC and we were talking about Champions League analysis of soccer. They're trying to stay somewhat normal. The news is at the top of the hour and the bottom of the hour, five minutes in and out. You know, it is what it is. I don't need to hear it repeated 50,000 times. And that's when we stopped my 14 year old from being stuck on the mm. TV watching the news. Okay. Yep. We'll watch it for about 15 minutes and that's it. And then we'll talk about it and digest it and refocus on what we can do to adapt and overcome. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and that, and that really addresses the next question is how do you stay positive? 
Well, it's definitely not by focusing on the things that make you feel negative, right? Set the station, hit that focus, be more intentional and start moving towards who you need to be. One of the best questions that I ask myself is who needs me right now in my A game? Like, what am I role modeling right now? And I've seen some really, you know, big shifts in a lot of people around me because I know that I'm going to be adjusting them, helping them see it, you know, shift through this. So there's never been a better time to show up, Absolutely. show up and step up for others. Yeah. Absolutely. And that, and that goes to the clarity as well. What, yeah. What's your message? What's your message you're putting out to your kids or to your neighbors or whomever? Um, yeah. It's, yeah. It's really easy, really easy, but we can keep talking about what we're seeing, what we're hearing. It's likely just recycled off the news, the media. Um, yeah. You know, ultimately rekindle why you do what you do. Get back to focusing on, Hey, what's that goal or that dream you want focus, focus on what matters. Focus on what's important. Yes, you're going to be proactive, not reactive, right? But if you can focus on, hey, you know, I'm really excited because I'm still going to build that house. I'm still going to go on that vacation. It's just been temporarily delayed. Well, it's easy for you, Andrew. You know, you, you know I, I got let go. Let go of what? A job? An opportunity, perhaps, for you to get to know yourself do some more sleep, you know, get some more focus on what matters. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's that art. I had one of my clients literally rekindle her love and appreciation for art and sold her first art print while she's out of some of that other work. Like, you know, there is another level, no matter what level we're on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and everybody who's at home with kids this is the perfect time to get that relationship rebonded, um, you know, and talk about what's going on in the world. Yes. But also let them know that, you know, as, as a colleague of ours and Andrew knows him very well put, you know, our grandparents were asked to go fight a war. We're being asked to sit on the couch. That's it. You know, so the social distancing, all that, don't look at it as, oh my God, that's this huge thing because it's not, it's an opportunity to refocus just like Andrew said on family, on, you know, what's going on in your household, what's going on. I don't know for me, I took it as an advantage last weekend. My garden's ready to go. As soon as the, the weather breaks, let's get the seeds in. Let's get this, get this rolling. Yeah. And, and my son actually said, when are we going to plant? Now, for a 14-year-old, that's like I'm, I'm hearing straight from the heavens. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's funny because it almost feels like I have been preparing for this for quite some time. I was listening to a great podcast, and they mentioned you know, getting a garden immediately was like, wait a sec, I think I bought some heritage pre-germinated seeds yep. way back. And I opened up the box still with the, the envelope and the, everything's still on. I hadn't opened it. I open it and it's a garden, full acre gar crisis garden kit. Now, the home that I, was my Airbnb is now where I'm living. It's surrounded by soil and clay, or sorry, clay and, and sand but I'm just going to line the deck in the back with planters. And go. yeah, even if I got to bring it in every day, I'm going to have a nice botanical rich vegetable garden on the deck. We'll, we'll make it happen. That's it. We'll That's make it exactly happen. Right. Yeah. You, you make what you have work. Yeah. So the clarity and the focus are extremely important, but we, what would be your second go to in this well you you mentioned earlier too we were talking you know before the call about being your best and it's impossible to feel your best if you're tired if you're not getting adequate sleep so after you've established a clear connection with your intention could be the intention for the hour and you got to reassess that oh i got thrown off someone called me and you know i have a i have a client who was like hey you know my my sister called me and for an hour all she did was bicker and it was very negative. I'm like, well, at that point, she's just changed your radio station. She's shifted your focus. So we're always checking in on focus. The goal after we adjust enough is we arrive at our destination, which is now I feel better. I feel a little less overwhelmed, a little less stressed. I feel like there's not quite so much darkness here and opportunity. 
And I'll tell you right now, if you spend your time rather than, you know, our forefathers, you know, brothers on the war, on the, on the field, you know, if you spend your time on the couch, <laughs> you spend too much time on the couch, exactly. good luck. I mean, it'll be easy to focus on what's on the screen. That'll program you to, you know, compare yourself to someone in a reality that they're not a part of. And, and it's about you deciding who am I going to be today? And you know what? I didn't drink any water. So let me go get some more water. Oh, I'm, you know, I could be eating these sweets, but I'm going to have fruit because my body craves real sugar, you know, real healthy fruit. Sure. So there's plenty of opportunities to be your best. Here's the challenge though. When most people come home, they want to turn it off. The work, the kids, the laundry, the shopping, the classes, the this, like it's limit. It's, it's, it just doesn't end. You know, studies are confirming even, you know, working moms are running marathons every day. Physiologically, you throw this pandemic in and we're maxed. We're, we're overflowing. So we need to take a step back for a sec and just honor this process. Honor yourself first off. Now, the pandemic's one thing, but again, it's not the fact of the pandemic that completely throws people into irritated conversations or throwing anger around there's a lot of fear and burnout going on because they're having a hard time adjusting to the facts the facts is we know it right now and i'm not going to give you any other facts than what we are already being shown yeah. but i do know there, there is one fact here that there's another level for you if you decide if you choose but it does start with focus and positioning yourself to be more positive more so, energized yeah let me just interject there focus so what how would you show somebody or explain to somebody how they can at home focus so think of focus as an elastic band right our minds right now david have the ability to probably consume about five calories and then we move so we're, we're living in a very distracted society now just to give you a little bit of background I actually got into the performance related work, getting this guy on under wraps because I had no focus. I was not clear. So there's actually three buckets that we can focus on one at a time. Now I'm not going to talk about the other two because the first bucket, guess what? It's you. It's focusing on yourself. So here's where it's like, okay, I'm focusing on the self bucket. Tell me what to do. Start by saying, what could I do? Focus for even a minute right now. You actually have to build up that muscle. Focus is psychology, right? Most people are like, well, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work out at home. That's great. You grab your weights and then we'll see how you really feel after. You'll probably feel like you're lifting a lot. I, I saw an interview. He's like, hey, I'm lifting vinegar jugs. And I'm like, okay, but we need to be lifting heavier weights, increasingly heavier weights mentally too. So focus is you know, taking an elastic and stretch it a little bit. Don't just pull it and snap it, right? right? Focus is something where over time you can warm up that focused elastic band, your mind to take on more. So when I'm getting people messaging, calling, it's like, and my own family, I'm like, wow, this is, this is heavy. Had I not been prepared, had I not been able to stretch that band, just like a, a muscle. You know, do you warm up first, right? The yeah. mind is a muscle. Now, most of us, what are we focused on? Our phone, our Netflix, other people, distractions. So I'd say the best thing to do to find focus and thus a higher level creativity and even imagination, I know that might seem far off, to spend some quiet time with yourself, with your family. You know, turn the lights down in the evening, overhead lights, Get that electronic sunset dial down a bit. Maybe some soft, soothing sounds of the spa from Spotify. That's one of my favorites. I actually set up, um, I'll just give you a little idea to help with focus. You know, I have salt, little um, tea light salt pieces around. I have my rebounder in the corner there. You know, I got, I actually removed in that front room there, David. Um, there was a bed there because like I said, this is a large Airbnb. And I removed the bed, I put in a portable infrared sauna, 
a nice sheepskin fur rug. The dog is hanging out there, all blissed out. And focus is about just slow it down. Unplug for a minute. You deserve it. You know, here's, here's an interesting fact. I, I mean, for some of you, you probably know what Think and Grow Rich is. And you've studied success. Thomas Edison. You look at all the great inventors, Tesla. One of the most powerful places you can be, whether or not it's a little scary right now, is in the dark. Even if it's for, for just five minutes. Maybe not fully in the dark because it's hard to maybe be alone and you feel like you need something to distract you from what's going on, but just pull the blinds down a little bit, right? Close your eyes, listen to your heart, like focus on who you are, right? That's the bucket first. Cause a lot of people say, hey, you know, my family, this, my husband, that my, my brother, my sister, my mom, my dad, if you're pouring from an empty bucket or a lower bucket because you're tired and you're stressed and you're trying to pour that into your relationship bucket. Oh, where did it all go? If you have a leak there, focus on, you know, what would help me feel more rested, more calm, focus on being your best. Like you said earlier, David, being more positive. Yeah. It's a little bit of a shift, but if you feel a little bit better, ask yourself when you feel more rested, more relaxed, do you feel more positive? Absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's a process there that you definitely have control over. Yeah, and a lot of us who are mandatorily at home now have a perfect chance yeah. to work on ourselves, um, work with our kids on this. Uh, you know, it's, I know in our house, the spa channel, is playing now as yeah, a home. Yeah, yeah. There's a diffusers going. Yeah. Some essential oils in the air. Calming, nurturing, just trying to make everything as I'll call it quote unquote normal as possible for us and for the and for the kids. So um, that's I mean that's awesome uh, information you just shared with everybody. And if you liked it, just give us a thumbs up. Um, but so what's the second most critical thing that we need to think about to survive? Well, you know, the, the, the fact is develop that focus and find time to rest and relax. And literally it's the next piece is that energy. Now here, here's where most people go. They're like, well, you know, fine. I'll go for a walk, Andrew. Great. The reason why a walk is good is not just because it's exercise. It's also a great way to pump out the stress chemicals that have been produced inside your body as a result of watching the news. So one of the biggest challenges we're going to have is generating enough energy, vibrancy, stamina, endurance to endure these uncertain times. The biggest thing is this, I'll give you an analogy so you can really conceptualize this because that way, maybe if you're feeling a little tired, you can think of a garden hose. Think about this. Imagine, it's beautiful outside. The kids want to go run in the sprinkler and, you know, you know, Dave goes out. He's like, Hey guys, let's, let's put the sprinkler out and it's all set up. And he turns on the faucet and he hears the water rushing and the kids are saying, Hey, where's the water? Where's the water? And you walk over and you hit the sprinkler a couple times. You're like, hmm. you walk back to the faucet. Would you get mad? take the faucet and, and the hose and the sprinkler and smash it against the house. No. Where would you go next? David, I mean, wouldn't the question be if the water is going and it's not coming out, there must be a blockage. Yep. So in order to fully release more energy, we actually want to work on releasing first. So in order to produce more of that flow of water unkink, and this is something that you need to be conscious of. It's a big part of focus. You build up your focus, your ability to say, Hey, right now I need to take a relaxed breath and I need to slow down. You know, part of our stress response is all being stimulated virtually. You know, our ancestors, they may have been on the field, but when they went home, if they went home, right, there was like, okay, you know, maybe enemies are going to come at us, but at least they had a chance to have a scotch and take their boots off and unplug. 
over a fire, right? Ancient tribes, what do you think they did after a big battle? They would go home to maybe what was left of it, maybe what had changed, and they would connect with each other. So maybe you need to do things that, you know, invigorate you. But first, release that stress. Release, like, you know, turn down those lights, stick on, you know, thanks to David, like the spa station. Shout out to Spotify there because they got some really cool soothing nature sounds. We love the piano merged in with like these beautiful whimsical spa, spa sounds. So you know exactly what you're talking about, right? Essential oil, little classical music, turn it down. You know, one of the best ways to reduce stress is lighten up, lighten up, laugh a little. You know, I don't mean be, you know, narcissistic, but one of my antidotes this week, it actually came out of nowhere is I've had trouble really connecting to a lot of movies and TV. I just, there's something about it where I, I lose a little bit of how I feel after a lot. So my wife and I don't even go near a lot of it. But what we did discover is I had all eight seasons of Seinfeld. <laughs> so, so I'm, you know, most people are hunkering down on rice and beans. I'm hunkered down on the, on eight season box set of Seinfeld. And we're just going to go one session per day, maybe a couple extra on the weekend. That's okay. If that's, yep. if that's okay with you, but you know, just to kind of say, Hey, where can I be a little bit more optimistic here? Where, where can I be more honoring of where I am and just say, Hey, it, it is where it is. And you know, it's definitely not going to get better in your life if you're not getting better. So that would be the next step from focus is, you know, generating, like I have a little more stamina, a little more vibrancy, and that will actually reflect into your relationships, not just with yourself, but ask yourself, when's the last time you snapped on someone? You got frustrated, irritated. Was it when you were feeling really good? <laughs> Was it when you had already been maybe really tired? So unfortunately, and fortunately, here are the real factors, right? Is this frustration, the fatigue, and the fear. That's where we want to go first. And you touched, you touched on it, like snapping when you're under stress. You know, you are in the fight or flight mode. And you're not thinking clearly, you're not thinking through things, you're just immediately making a response. And that's not where you want to be. Yeah. You want to move yourself over to the calming side, the rest and digest side, and really be able to deal with what you have to deal with. I mean, we yeah. I, I say this to my kids all the time, you know, you're complaining. You need to have you can complain. I, I don't have a problem with that, but you need to have an answer for that complaint when you're finished. Love it. Yeah. You know, if you don't, if you have a problem, you got to solve it. You got to, and it may not be the best solution in the world, but something you got to be thinking and moving forward. Think outside the box. I mean, I don't know if you were, at, I was at a conference in early January and they were talking about somebody needed a $20 million insurance policy and wow. he couldn't get it. And then they went to another guy and the other guy said, yeah, I'll get it for you. He got 20 $1 million policies. Oh yeah completely outside the box and that's where we need to be right now as well you know getting that focus getting that energy and starting to think outside the box solve those problems yeah and and so here's the interesting thing by labeling it a problem your tendency is to let it continue to be a problem instead yeah. say hey what am i not seeing right now what am i not getting what could I be doing? And, you know, I love the thinking outside the box part, David. I actually have created a philosophy of flying over the box. As an eagle and, and an observer, you know, it's what's great about having a coach and having, you know, David on your side is that they can see things outside your box. And often what happens when we get stricken with pain, fatigue, irritation, and, and fear is we stay in the box, right? It's like, well, I don't have energy to get outside the box. I don't know what it would look like to fly over. So the big goal here is community more than ever, whether that's, you know, a lot more virtual calls, phone calls. Uh, I know Zoom is getting overloaded with the amount of people bringing their teams on and, you know, creating some sort of harmony in their community. Ask people, if you're having a challenge, be honest and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm having this, challenge. And if, if you know someone that has results in that area, 
ask them. They're more than happy. There's never been a better time to care for people. Absolutely. And this is where legends are born and reborn, in fact. And you, you corrected me on something, and it's a problem that I, and again, I just did it right there. It's <laughs> something that I do all the time is language. Language controls. Yeah. You know, by the word, they use problem instead of challenge. You know, two different connotations entirely. Yeah, a problem, it's like, oh, I got a problem. No, you don't. You have an opportunity. There and if you, you see that as, as a pivot for growth, you'll be more. Let me give you, and I actually think, David, this is a great place to go, not only back to um, focus, but then how do we bridge into energy? Give me a tool. Give me an activity. It's the power of words. Check this out. So if we go back to that bucket, that self bucket, because mm -hmm. you can't pour from an empty vessel into your family, we got to get back to really invigorating, relaxing, restoring who you are, both mentally, emotionally, and physically. Go in and ask yourself if you were to be that person and you were to be more focused, you were to be more rested, more calm, more invigorated, choose a word. You may even have to set this word up as an alarm reminder. It's not like you're going to be in the middle of many appointments. For many of you, you, got, you, you can have the alarm showing up hourly for you and your family every single day. Choose a word. Even the word focus gets you to focus. 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 And you can actually start using the power and, and in fact, the consciousness of that word. Now, check this out. A word itself restructures water. Water, the unsolved mystery. It's a great documentary. The fact that we're 70% or should be 70% water. Most of us are dehydrated on what Coca-Cola or Mountain Dew, right. not obviously people listening here, but a word can not only be a great anchor, it's a reminder and it's actually programming that into who you are. So let me give you a slight example on focus. The, you know, the, the study and, you know, there's a lot of study done on, on the structuring, restructuring of water. They wrote the word love on a test tube and took a molecule of water and prior to freezing, presented the molecule to the word love. And as it froze, it created this beautiful crystalline or crystalline snowflake structure. Now they wrote the word hate, did the same thing, and it was ugly and gnarled. So water, the unsolved mystery, this is, this is great because just looking at hateful words, listening to music that for some, I mean, they even tested it on plants. Classical music, a plant thrives towards, you know, I used to listen to heavy metal in, in high school and a lot of that, that, that hip hop gangster stuff, still enjoy the hip hop here and there, but the plant literally grows away from it and starts to, starts to, you know, almost shrink. So plants like humans, there's a lot of consciousness there. So use the power of words to your advantage and remind yourself of, if it's something you want, you want to be more invigorated, maybe they have, have the word invigorated show up as an alarm reminder. Have something that will remind you of who you want to become. You know, set that intention. It's not who you are that matters right now. It's who you become through all of this. And on the other side, you're going to see, you're going to look around and say, like, hey, I showed up. I stepped up. You know, that, unfortunately, that person, eh, they kind of lost it. Now, if you think that that is happening around you, take action. Best way to grow is to lead others to growth, you know, to show others what's possible. Give them extra breathing room. Help them take a little weight off their shoulders or their, or their back. So, yeah, using the power of words, like we were talking about problem versus challenge, would be a great way to sequence in more focus. You know, if, if you put the word distraction as an alarm reminder, you know it's going to happen. You're going you're gonna to be prompted to be more distracted. Absolutely. So what would be the opposite of that? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you reminded me when you were saying that, I think it was Churchill mm. who said, you know, when the opportunity, are you going to be ready mm. to, to do that? You know, Love it. Great, great, great men are made, you know, when presented with an opportunity, but that person has to be ready for it. And now is our time. 
you know, it's been generations and now is the time for people to step up and, and do it. Yeah. Well, there's, it, it's sort of, I know this is going to probably sound strange, but I feel like we're in lucky times. Now hear me out. There's actually a science to luck. It's two factors. And maybe if you understand those factors, you'll, the resistance to, what do you mean luck? People will become lucky here. They'll find ways to step up and, and, and thrive, not just get by and survive. Luck is a matter of preparedness and opportunity. And I think it's pretty obvious that a lot of us have been doing the work to prepare mentally, physically, getting gardens together, you know, finding a way to bring our family and our community tighter. You know, so that preparedness, that opportunity then shows up and maybe it's not the opportunity you were planning for or expecting, but if the bar is set and you can show up to that bar, imagine what's possible at that point. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you, that just hits it right on the head. So what would be another skill we talked focus we talked to energy is there a third skill that everybody should be working on taking a look at assessing yeah i i mean ultimately you know the brain handles chunks of information 20 25 minutes at a time so if you're reading take a break if you're you know learning something on a webinar or a seminar you know take a break you know even this you at this point, maybe your brain's like, okay, Andrew, I got lots of notes. Let me go apply some of it. So, you know, maybe what you do is you come watch the second half again. You know, I'd say the biggest thing here is begin mastering some of these basics, right? It's really tough to have a high level of influence in your family and in your community if you're not focused, if you're not energized and showing people you know how to reduce your stress and others. Right. I would say the next ripple is to focus on who needs me. Right. How can I support others? There's going to be a ripple effect here that I believe is going to shine brighter than any pandemic. And this that, is, and he's not talking just doctors. He's not just no, talking nurses. No. He's talking across the board, helping your neighbor go get groceries. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, you get your mask on if that's, if that's what you're good for and you're doing and go get your neighbor who, maybe is immune compromised or a little older, you right. know, they're already having some challenges and, and maybe you mow their lawn. Uh, maybe you go get their groceries. They're like, Hey, you see someone, you know, struggling, even just a conversation with someone who may not have a partner, children, they may not have much of a family. Maybe you're like, Hey, yeah, uh, I never, never thought of it. Him or her may be a little more alone than I am. You know, just a call saying, Hey, how are you making through this? I've sent a lot of messages to people like, you know, that, that I know are likely having some, some adjustment shifts going on right now and just saying, Hey, like where, where do you need some support? Right. And, and I, you know, I was on a lot of zooms, a lot of calls, like these aren't cha-ching calls. These aren't calls like, Oh, it's, you know, it's level 12 of my coaching. And it's like, Hey, I, people need me regardless of it being on the clock or not. And people need you right now. And there's a lot you can do. Absolutely. You know, just, just by focusing and working on yourself. And I'll, I guarantee you finding that clarity within yourself, spending some time to release and relax will actually be a huge, huge relief to others. Right. Pour that into someone else. You know, find praise, find a way to be creative. Hey, let's get our kids on a Zoom together and maybe do some crafts. I don't know. You know, think of something that someone's having a challenge with and get creative. Find a way to help them. You made me laugh because I did a Zoom. I did a Facebook post the other day with my son as my cameraman. And what <laughs> cra we were doing crafting. And my craft was how to make a mask out of a T-shirt and shoestrings. Mm, you don't have love to, it. you know, just make it a game, but make it an understanding as well. You know, and, and it's perfect. You know, Zoom has made it open pretty much for anybody to use, um, you know, so and FaceTime and all those other you don't you can be isolated, but not isolated. It just yeah. doesn't matter how you look at it. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're in a very, I mean, this is a good point. We're in very fortunate positions right now where we can jump on a zoom where Mm -hmm. we're not truly isolated. We just got to think outside the box. Yeah. You know, you're like, well, I, you know, I don't want to go out and to the store and I I need this, but I don't want to go shopping here. Okay. Well, click an order, you know, click an order. And thanks to Amazon, there's, there's stuff that I've been getting. Uh, the one thing I know that's going to happen is I, my wife's going to have to learn how to, how to trim hair. So <laughs> I bought a, I bought a, a hair trimmer and if it doesn't work out, um, the hat may actually be on at some point because I may have a more, uh, clean look if you know what I mean. So, you know, like, yeah, I don't get to go see my, my, my buddy, Anthony, the barber who makes me feel really great and refreshed, but you know, this could be an opportunity for us to just have some fun, you know, kind of like a Chia pet, you know? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing this morning. I'm like, what yeah. do I was due a couple weeks ago and I put it off. The, yeah. Yeah. Mind. It's, it's, I, it could, could be time for us to, you know, I'm definitely not going to go shave it to skin. That's, that's a little much, but <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if she can get an appropriate level of fade in. And I, I actually used to do it to myself. I used to like, you know, razor it up and, the top's getting a little long right now. So we'll, we'll see the kind of craziness that ensues here, but you know, have some fun, lighten it up, find some games or activities. Yeah, David. Of and course. You just, you just, that whole example just pointed out to everybody problem, challenge, opportunity, solution, completely yeah. switched yeah. it around. Of, I didn't get a haircut. Oh my God. I got, you know, there's no barber open to, okay, we're gonna have some fun with this. Let's see what you can do. Yeah, yeah. You've wanted to grow your hair and- And you'll laugh about it for the next 30 years. Yeah, or I'll probably become a barber as, <laughs> as a second set of, of, of income streams. So, you know, there, there's always an opportunity, but like you said, go outside the box, right? Instead of, you know, it's not a problem. It's an opportunity. Yes. It's always been an opportunity. And maybe now we can appreciate what we had, right? whether how fast life goes back to what we were, or what we are having, there's never been a better time to show appreciation. You know, one, one of the best, and this came from, I believe, John Templeton, um, who was interviewed by Tony Robbins years ago, asked about what was his primary fo- uh, form or tool for attracting that level of billionaire abundance, actually said gratitude. And it's it right now, the antidote to fear is focusing on what you do have, what we appreciate, what we're grateful for, for the people we're grateful for and reaching out and letting them know. And, you know, putting that out there in a way that, you know, we can dispel a lot of the negativity in the newsfeed and the media, right? All the, all the challenging themes that we're going to be bringing into our minds. I had a client yesterday who, said to me, you know, I'm, I'm having a hard time right now. It feels stressful seeing some of these news feeds. And my question was, maybe it's time to take a break from those news feeds Absolutely. and focus on your news feeds. What's going over your mind? Have you journaled recently? Could you write that poem? Is it time for some art? I actually have my didgeridoo over here. And I actually get to finally learn circular breathing. So I'm going to learn how to play my didgeridoo properly. I'm super excited. So I'm going to have a, probably a decent haircut, maybe a, a bald head and a didgeridoo. I mean, <laughs> that doesn't sound like, you know, the end of times. This is it's the beginning of new times. And, Absolutely. you know, with that type of perspective, honor it, be more optimistic. I'm not asking you to be out to lunch and rocking around with a, you know, smiling at everybody and in their solemn state, but right, like just bring it up a notch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Time to shine. So is there anything I haven't? And I mean there's a ton we could cover. Of we course, could of the course. Next six hours. But about what we talked about, is there anything that we haven't, you know, really gotten into or developed enough or anything you want to add? Yeah, I, I would say the biggest thing that we need to touch on is why is having more focus other than, well, yeah, I'll feel good and there'll be less stuff at home that might, you know, throw, get me thrown off, or my family thrown off, but getting back to what you really want, rekindling the vision of what do you want and why do you want it? You know, 
focus on a result that you know you've already been going after it. You've tried to go after it. You know, maybe it's like, well, I'm going to build that house in the mountains. As a couple of my clients are like, hey, that's, that was in the works prior to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's this dream car that you just sit and you're like, oh, you can smell the leather, right? I would want to be in a place where I'm envisioning a result. You know, sometimes goals can be a little lofty, kind of like, well, I got a goal, just like there's a cloud going by, but focus on a specific result that you want. You know what? I was going to take my family on this trip and now that's postponed. Now what is this trip going to look like? And maybe you go, you know, vision board and brainstorm. Um, I would literally right now change up what's on your phone's, uh, your, your phone's wallpaper, change what's on your laptop. You know, if you're not big for the fireplace channel, I got the aquarium channel. So you like, you put in the DVD and it's just a pool of fish, school of fish and a school in a pool of fish. <laughs> so, you know, the, the key here is start imagining, maybe you can do some, you know, vision boarding with your kids. Hey, we've got some magazines. Let's cut out the things. Oh yeah. We want our backyard with a pool, you know, start looking at the things that you really want. And, and ask yourself why. And if you spend more time there, moving towards your definition of freedom, right? Time, geographical, emotional health freedom, you're going you're gonna to have a reason to want to focus more, to show up for your family more, to fill up your bucket, your self bucket with more energy. But again, distractions, stressful things. You know, we got we to look, we got to be aware, we got to be conscious. This is really easy, this time in history, to check out, to be unconscious. I mean, a lot of people are already doing that, but now it's like even more reason, to, I just want to watch this for seven, I got seven seasons today and I'm going to catch up on. And the bucket they're filling up is the drool bucket. Like, right. I'm not making light of this, but that result will pull you further down this, this rabbit hole. And we need to be more diligent in where we put our minds and our, and ourselves. Yep. Time for us to step up, step up or step out. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So Andrew, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a fantastic interview. I'm sure everybody, you know, we're getting a lot of comments on here. Art's a great therapy. I used to cut my husband's hair. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we're all, we all get it. We just have to realize it. And realize, and this is master it. Just ma small things, master those right now. Absolutely. May, this may not seem like, well, I was looking for these big explosive ideas. It's the simple. I mean, Bruce Lee didn't master 10,000 punches. He had one punch mastered 10,000 times. And instead of hours going in the ring with someone in, in a duo, he'd go in and within a minute, it was done. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you. You laid everything out very clearly. Uh, you know, I'm going to listen to this again and uh, my kids are going to listen to it. Uh, nice. That's probably amazing. not by their choice, but we're going to listen to it as a family. You know? <laughs> Come on, dad. Come <laughs> on, exactly. dad. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, I want to thank everybody for joining us, but I'm going to make it an announcement here. Um, we were, putting together a coping with stress program that we were going to um, sell. Um, we are not going to sell that program now. We're, we're completely shifting it. Um, it will be available in our private Facebook group because some of the legal requirements, I need to do it to a closed group and make it available, but it will be free. Uh, wow. 10, 10 modules, awesome. a book, videos, wow. audios. Um, so, you know, I, our group is called one change away. Take advantage of this. You're, at wow. home. you know, we're, it's going to be interactive. We're going to try to walk people through it and, you know, change some lives in the process. So. Yeah. You know what? One change and that word adjusting a plane, the majority of the time is off course. And what does it do? It readjusts, it readjusts, it readjusts, it readjusts. All you need to do is readjust. And in fact, in the performance sciences, that adjustment, literally two and a half millimeters, a little bit over here, a little bit over there, a little bit over here, 
a little bit over there and watch what happens. David, you're a rock star. This is going to be, this is going to be a powerful time. And, um, anything I can do for you, you and your community, the bridge is open. Let's, let's, let's make this happen. I'm going to post Andrew's website in the comments or in the title when I go back and edit this and it's available on Facebook. It'll be available on YouTube. You can watch it a thousand times on YouTube. It will be there on our channel. Um, and like I said, our private group, one change away. Um, you know, I, I'm going to be flying by the seat of my pants on this one over the weekend, trying to get it uh, organized and, and ready for Monday, but that'll be our launch day. Um, nice. So Andrew, again, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, You're very welcome. And I will be talking. Yes. Uh, again, I am absolutely positively sure. Um, and everybody, remember, you are just one change away from better health and a better life overall. Have a great day. Take care, everybody.